What's going on guys, Forrest back again, welcome to part 2, the continuation of what I want for Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, idealistically. So, the next thing that I would like to see, you know, if you look at Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1, you look at Ninja Gaiden 3 or Razor Edge, there's a proper training mode in those games. It's kind of bare bones, but at least it's there. So, when you're waiting for somebody to join, or you're waiting for somebody to ready to start the mission, I think there's a two minute countdown, if I'm not mistaken, and you can practice your combos against, you know, whatever enemy type is there. Now, imagine if there was a full blown area where you could do that. You know, it's a controlled environment, you can choose to select any enemy type in the game, any boss in the game, doesn't matter, and have them in a controlled environment so you can learn how to dodge an attack, whether you can counter this, if you can block reset without taking damage, if you can, you know, do all these different things, that would be, like, super sick. You know, going to the mission mode, Sigma 1's got more missions than Sigma 2, that's fact. Um, Razor Edge and Ninja Gaiden 3 Vanilla has more missions than Sigma 2. So instead of having, you know, just making up the numbers, imagine if you could create your own missions. That would be super sick. The ability to create your own missions in Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 and have them, you know, be tested by the world's best players to see how far you can get you know we need more modes in the game bring back survival mode where you had you know you had the ability to try and complete an entire gauntlet wave after wave and after wave of enemies using only one type of weapon you know bring those back from ninja game 2 vanilla bring back the things that you've introduced into Sigma 2 Plus, which are really sick, like the um, the race courses. I've not played Sigma 2 Plus, but I have seen videos on the race courses, and I really like them, especially from a speed a speedrunner's point of view. You know, I speedrun missions, so it would be awesome to have you know like a leaderboard for that, but have it so it's for the entire single player game, not just for you know, one little section or part of the map. That would be awesome. But imagine if, you know, there was daily, weekly, and monthly challenges in the game, where if you can complete certain conditions in the game, it could be anything from, you know, complete every mission with Dragon Sword or a particular weapon. Um... What else? Maybe something connected to, you know, certain hit combos like 666 or, you know, 777, something, you know, crazy. And have that in, like, a challenge. And if you can complete these challenges, then you would be able to get, I don't know, like, unique items or customization options or... You know, you could bank up the experience and then, or the essence or the value of what that is worth. And then you could use that on like a sphere grid system to, you know, purchase something that you would want to get. You know, how awesome would it be if they implemented into the game something like, you know, obviously there's a sphere grid system, you can buy upgrades, you can buy the accessories and all that kind of stuff. But imagine if there was a masochist level of requirements. It could be 10 commandments, could be more. So imagine 10 very, very difficult things to achieve that probably less than 0.01% of the entire community would be able to complete. This could be from 100 million karma 
on missions, legitimately. 100 million on Mass Ninja Chapter Challenge, legitimately. Complete every team mission, fastest time cumulatively, under one hour. You know, very, very difficult things to do. Complete every mission uh, using, you know, Vigorian Flail or something crazy. Imagine if there was something like that in the game, where if you did all these 10 requirements, even no damage every mission or no damage chapter challenge or whatever, but if you could do those 10 things, then you would be able to unlock something that shows the, I guess, the skill level of that player to distinguish them from the masses. This is not an egotist or anything, but it would be awesome if this was in the game. So, you're probably thinking, well, the reward has to be pretty good for that. Imagine if you could play the game from a different point of view, like the entire single player from, you know, you, it would give you a choice, and the choice would be, you know, M Muramasa, Genshin, Ayane, Momiji and Rachel. Those would be your choices. However, if you chose, say, Muramasa, or you chose Genshin, or, you know, Joe Hayabusa, then that would unlock that as a playable character, and give you a different perspective on the single player, where you play as that player, instead of Ri Hayabusa. You know, how, how impressive would it be if you played a team mission and you had Genshin as a selectable character so people knew that this guy was top shit this guy was a true top player world class and you know you could have it so there was conditions so if you played Genshin obviously you'd have access to his moveset and you could probably broaden his moveset with different skills and stuff that you could buy, make him better. Also equip different accessories and stuff, so accessorize him. But imagine if if you select normal Genshin, you've got infinite piercing void and impo, just like the single player. But the the penalty for having infinite piercing void and impo is you cannot transform into Fiend Genshin. You know, have a drawback. Yeah, you can pierce in Void as much as you want, but if you want to do, like, Super Saiyan Feet and Genshin style, you can't do it. You know, have it like a button combination, where you play as... Let's say I'm playing Genshin, I'm playing a mission solo. If I press a button sequence, so I press a certain two buttons together, I can transform from Genshin to Fiend Genshin and have access to his moveset. Like the ground pound and all that kind of stuff. That would be super sick. I would love that in the game because it would show who the true professionals of the game are. The other thing that I would love to see, which is a very minor issue, because Ninja Game 3 and Razor Edge has this feature. If I want to play a team mission on my own in Ninja Game Sigma 2, I can't do it. I legitimately cannot do it. Because, you know, I say, oh, I want to play alone, but I can't because the computer's still here with me. It, it makes no sense. I want to play the mission on my own, not with the computer. I don't want to babysit the computer. Because everybody knows the computer sucks from mentor onwards. I think that was intentional because it forces people to play cooperatively for the harder missions because the computer is crap so that's something I would else like to see in the game there's probably a bunch of stuff that I'm forgetting but until I can think of something for the most part that's probably gonna be it I hope um, people understood my viewpoint where I'm coming from with this um, obviously, feel free to leave your comments if there's anything you agree or disagree with, please say why. 
If there's something I've missed, then please feel free to leave your comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.